Hi folks, coming to you live, live from downtown Vancouver. Actually, from Chris Gardner's lobby. Can you believe it? What a world. Anyways, uh, this is your ICBD Daily News for September 13th, 2023. And I'll give you the heads up on two more surveys showing how cash-strapped people are and probably in related news, how the feds just blew billions of your tax dollars and how the BC government are uh, overspending on a hospital by a billion dollars and costing patients three years wait. For links to all sources, of course, go to icbaindependent.ca. We post them here on Facebook, but we can't because of the Trudeau government's Foolish Online News Act. Can't believe they have not fixed that yet, but uh, you can get all of the news links at icbaindependent.ca. Okay, two surveys out today, and both show just how concerning the affordability crisis has become. The Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation talked to 4,000 homeowners, and a full quarter of them reported they're having trouble making their mortgage payments due to interest rates, uh, hikes and inflation. Said the survey firm, quote, a significant proportion of mortgage consumers are struggling to make ends meet and fulfill their debt obligations, especially those under 35. No wonder Pierre Polyev is seeing so much support, especially from people under 35 for his housing promises and his work. Uh, uh, you know, he was the first one to call that this inflation crisis would happen. Meanwhile, Research Co., which is a BC firm uh, headed by Mario Canseco, surveyed British Columbia parents and 57% said they are finding it very difficult or impossible to make ends meet financially. That's up 17 points from February 22. 22. 57% of BC families, BC parents, say difficult or impossible to make ends meet. Listen, affordability has become the critical issue today. The middle class is being squeezed like never before. It has to be addressed by our political leaders. Story two. Canada's parliamentary budget officers, this is like an independent watchdog within uh, the House of Commons who looks at all the different promises and legislation uh, and spending that uh, the federal government does and offers his opinion and reports on it. Uh, he examined the $28.2 billion cash uh, payout that the federal and Ontario governments gave to foreign companies to subsidize production of electric vehicle battery plants through the end of 2032. Now, this was in response to what Joe Biden was doing in the States, uh, basically stroking huge checks to try to keep uh, these companies in the US. Uh, federal and Ontario government wanted some of them in Canada. So they basically opened the checkbook, your checkbook, and wrote a, wrote a check for 28 billion, I can't even believe it, $28.2 billion. It's like 35% of what British Columbia spends on everything in government. Um, it's a bananas number. Anyways. Uh, Prime Minister Trudeau and Premier Ford, when they did this, said that the money would be recouped by government within five years. But the budget officer, who has no political skin in the game, says, no way. He sets the break even at maybe 20 years, which is a worrisome length of time, especially in an industry that sees a lot of innovation and technological advancement. A little crazy fact for you. This subsidy was more than twice the amount that Prime Minister Stephen Harper spent to save the Ontario auto industry in 2009, and he got a lot of criticism for that. And yet almost all of that was paid back within a decade. So this is uh, not a loan. Uh, this 28.2 billion is a straight subsidy. And uh, the fact that it might spark some economic growth 20 years from now, maybe, maybe it's breaking even. Uh, finally, the BC NDP government. So they've been promising a new hospital in Surrey forever. Surrey's fastest growing city uh, in Canada forever. You know, since before they were first elected in 2017, they've been promising this hospital. Finally, after six years in power, they got around to a re-announcement of a re-announcement of a re-announcement of an announcement yesterday uh, and did a groundbreaking. Big problem. Their dilly dallying has cost taxpayers dearly. So last year, last year, a year ago, they said the hospital would cost 1.72 billion and would open in 2027. Yesterday, when they broke ground, they said it's gonna be 2.89 billion. That's like 1, 1.15 billion more, crazy. And it's not gonna open until 2030, three years later than they promised. You know, Health Minister Adrian Dix was breaking his arm, patting himself on the back for all this, claiming, quote, they're building a model of the future. But for the sake of sick patients and beleaguered taxpayers, let's hope this model of more money for later outcomes is not the model that we see in the future in British Columbia. Okay, that's all the news I have for today. Uh, feel free to leave me a comment. Always email me, jordan at icba.ca. Always happy to look at uh, your tips. Uh, if you've got a story that I should address tomorrow, I'd be happy to do that. Take care.